Hi, my name's Simon Thorpe, and I'd like to tell you about my propositions for solving the debt problem. Um, essentially, it, in a nutshell, it's to use central bank money to pay off public debts to the banking system. I think we all know about the scale of debt at the moment, public sector debt in the US. Uh, uh, taxpayers owe $15.6 trillion, uh, and the latest figures for the European Union from Eurostat uh, office put the figure at 10.42 trillion euros. This, this number has been increasing rapidly over the last few years. For instance, between 2010 and 2011, it went up by another 610 billion for the European Union. And if we look at the, uh, the figures for uh, individual countries, it's quite interesting to see that top of the list is actually Germany with over two trillion uh, of, of debt, followed uh, closely by Italy, France, the United Kingdom. Uh, but the remarkable thing is the bottom line, the 27 U European Union countries together owe $10.4 trillion to the banking system. We, we have continuously being told that the only solution is massive austerity, public sector cuts to balance the budget. I think this is clearly impossible. Uh, the, the real problem is where does the money come from? Who do we owe this money to? Uh, until a few years ago, I, I thought we presumably owed the money to China or Saudi Arabia, but in fact, most of the money that is owed by government is just simply owed to commercial banks who've lent the government and, and the rest of us lots uh, large amounts of money. Um, but uh, there's a very interesting uh, puzzle, which is that where did the banks get the money from? Uh, this is something that many people don't realise, uh, but it's been shown that uh, in two books recently, uh, Where Does Money Come From, uh, done by people at the Positive Money uh, uh, website in, in the UK, uh, also the Web of Debt, uh, Ellen Hodgkin, Hodgkin Brown's uh, book, both of these document very clearly, I think, the, uh, the fact that uh, banks lend money that they don't have. They literally create money out of thin air, on demand, uh, uh, whenever whenever somebody uh, asks money and, and the banks think it's okay, then they just create the money out of, uh, out of thin air. For instance, in 2008, for every £100 that had been lent by banks, only about £1.50 was backed up by deposits. Why do they do this? Well, the simple reason is interest payments. Um, by lending money, uh, they can they can uh, get interest payments on that money, even though they didn't have the money to lend. Let's go back to those figures for the European Union. Uh, these are the government debt figures, and let's add into those the interest payments that each country is currently paying. These are the figures for 2011. You can see at the top of the list, six, 67 billion pound uh, euros uh, was paid by Germany. Uh, 76 billion by Italy. To, these are payments in just one year to the banking system, and in total, that makes 370.8 billion euros of interest payments for the 27 Euro, uh, uh, European Union countries in 2011. That's 2.9 percent of European GDP, and. Uh, that actually reaches 7 percent of GDP in the case of Greece, for instance. If we take together all the interest payments over the period 1995 to 2011, we get the staggering total of 5.6 trillion euros of interest payments. This is money that's been provided by European taxpayers to pay the banking system. I think that central bank lending is a solution to this problem. Uh, central banks can lend uh, as well, uh, but there's a paradox. Currently, the uh, central banks, such as the Bank of England, print large amounts of money for the financial sector. Uh, for instance, the Bank of England recently pr printed £325 billion pounds worth of qu quantitative easing for the financial sector at 0.5% interest. Uh, and the European Central Bank has printed nearly €1 trillion Euros of, uh, uh, of, of money for hundreds of banks in two rounds of what they call LTRO, Long-Term Refinancing Operations. The first round was in on the 21st of December last year, €489 billion uh, Euros worth. And then a second round, €529 billion on the 29th of February. 
Uh, this money was supposed to be used by the banks for doing something useful, lending to businesses, uh, stimulating the economy, and so on. Did they do that? No. Nope. Did they did they do anything useful? Well, on the on the second of March, seven hundred seventy seven billion euros was parked back with the European Central Bank. Uh, uh, for overnight uh, saving, the banks just don't know what to do with the, with the money. They they they're not prepared to lend it. Uh, there was a tribune by Michel Rocard and Pierre Larouture in, in Le Monde on the second of January, which made the very uh, uh, sensible point that this is this is insanity. Why did central banks only lend to other banks and not to governments? There's no sense whatsoever. Uh, if you listen to the arguments, there are two reasons that are given why central banks aren't, uh, shouldn't be allowed to lend to governments. One is fear of inflation, and the other is that it's prevented by the Lisbon Treaty. Both of these arguments, I think, bogus. Firstly, fear of inflation. This is an argument um, developed by the Germans in particular. They, are, they seem to be worried about hyperinflation caused by printing uh, banknotes, essentially. But it depends what you use the money for. If you use the money... Uh, provided by central banks to pay off debt, this doesn't produce inflation uh, because there's no effect when the debt corresponds to money that has been generated by the banking sector, as we saw, invented out of thin air. So I think this, this inflation argument is, is really bogus. And in any case, printing money for governments to, to, to pay off uh, uh, debt is far less inflationary than pin printing money for private banks who can do whatever they like with the money. The other argument that it's prevented by the Lisbon Treaty, and it's true that Article 123 of the Lisbon Treaty says specifically the overdraft facilities and other types of credit facilities in favour of central governments are pro prohibited. But paragraph 2 of the same article specifically says this does not apply to publicly owned credit institutions. Um, so in fact, the, the ECB can lend to governments via publicly owned credit institutions. So why don't we do that? I specifically sent some questions to the European Central Bank, and they very nicely answered. One of the questions I asked was, can the European Central Bank print arbitrarily large amounts of money? And the answer is basically yes. Um, uh, essentially, if, if, uh, if uh, the borrowers can provide collateral, then, then it's okay. The other question was, if a publicly owned credit institution borrowed money from the ECB and supplied, the, let's say, the Greek government with the money to pay off its debts to the financial markets, would the ECB object? And there again, it was very clear. According to the treaty, such publicly owned credit institutions shall be given the same treatment by national credit central banks and the ECB as private in, uh, credit institutions. It's up to the banks to decide how to use the money they have borrowed from the central bank system. And in other words, they can do precisely what they want with the money. There is absolutely no control, as with uh, commercial and private banks. So this actually offers a, a very neat and I think perfectly uh, plausible solution to the entire cr debt crisis. The idea it would be that central banks lend the money via publicly owned credit institutions. Those credit in institutions lend the money to governments and the governments use the money to pay off the entire public debt to the banking system. As a result, European governments would now owe nothing to the banks. Uh, the governments would be able to pay back the central bank at the same low end rates of interest over a long period of time, uh, same rates that uh, are currently offered to commercial banks. As a result, the European taxpayers would economise the 370 billion euros that are currently paid every year in excessive interest charges to the banking sector. And that money would be, uh, it could be immediately used for preventing the need for austerity. But another interesting thing is that ratings agencies will become irrelevant. The, the governments no longer uh, owe money to banks. Uh, they only owe, it, owe, owe the money to the central banks. So let's take an example, Greece. Greece currently owes 355 billion euros to the banking system. In 2011, it paid 15 billion in interest. That's 7% of its GDP. And in fact, it's going to get even worse because at current interest rates, they were being charged 29% in February 2012. They could end up paying over 100% of GDP in interest charges. This is completely insane. So let's suppose that the ECB lends Greece the, the 355 billion via publicly owned credit institution. Greece pays off its entire debt. Uh, all its debts to the banks, 
uh, and then pays back the, the European Central Bank at 1% interest over 10 years, for instance. Um, how could they do this? Well, actually, you could do this with, very easily with a, uh, with a financial transaction tax. That's another story. But uh, finan uh, financial transactions in Greece currently around 12.5 trillion a year. Uh, and a tax at 0.3% on that would be enough to, uh, to pay off the, the ECB debt. Another interesting example is the UK. Government debt in 2011 was standing at £1,293 billion, uh, and that involved interest payments for 2011 of £48 billion. That's money going directly from the taxpayers into the banking system. Uh, let's suppose that the Bank of England lend, uh, lends the £1,293 billion to the government via a publicly owned credit institution, for instance the Royal Bank of Scotland, and the, 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 the UK government then uses that money to reimburse the entire national debt. The bank should be happy, right? And the UK taxpayer would save £48 billion in interest payments every year. That's, that's money that can be used for, for uh, 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 reducing austerity. And in principle, the UK government would then pay back the Bank of England under friendly terms, very low rent interest rates over a long period of time. But actually, here's the amusing thing, or not. In fact, since the, the, bank, uh, the bank of England didn't have the money that it lend, lent to the U UK government, there's actually no reason particularly why the, the Bank of England should be paid back the money. The money was completely fictitious, just as the money that banks have lent to governments is fictitious too. Where's the catch? I mean, it sounds like this, this, doesn't, this is too good to be true, right? Well, the, uh, you know, the, the, interestingly, the banks should be very happy because they're going to get all their money back, all this, all this money that they lent to governments, so they get it back, right? So they should be happy. Well, the problem is that the money that they get back from, from the central banks isn't real money. It's no more real money than the money that they lent to governments. Uh, it simply vanishes into thin air when the debt gets paid back. Uh, so that, that money just, that debt just disappears. Um, the, and the real killer is that they no, no longer get paid the interest that they've been used to being paid. Um, and the problem here is that we've just effectively killed the goose that has been laying golden eggs for the banks actually for centuries. Uh, this is how banks make their money. They lend, they lend money that they don't have to governments and get paid interest on it. Um, but they can't justify this anymore. If the, if the central banks take the place of commercial banks and, they, and it's the central banks that provide the money to pay off the debt, then they have no justification in charging the, the 5.6 trillion euros of debt uh, of interest charges that they've managed to get out of European taxpayers in, since 1995. So the conclusion to all this, well, we really need to take retake control of the money creation process. It, it, it should be uh, the responsibility of elected governments via central banks and not left in the hand of commercial uh, and private banks. You can bet your last dollar that the financial sector will do everything in its power to block any attempts to remove their monopoly on money creation. And they have supporters in very high places. Uh, Mario Draghi, the ex-European -Dir director of Goldman Sachs, is, is, has, is now the head of the ECB since November last year. He's not going to be in favour of this. And the uh, prime ministers of Italy and Greece are both associated with Goldman Sachs. They're in the system. We have to fight these people. And of course, in the UK, the government is literally paid by the City of London to protect its interests. They will, they will not be uh, uh, signing up for this. But we have to, uh, citizens have to act now. We have to get the control of the system back. And if you agree with me that there's a real problem that needs fixing here, can I recommend, if you're in the UK in particular, to join up with the Positive Money uh, Group? They have an excellent website where they, where they explain this, this situation. Uh, thanks very much for listening.